Okay, good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. Um, this is the first Encompass Live of 2020. Yay! First of the decade. Yes, I'm on that side of the argument. It is the first, it is the new decade. <laughs> um, I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission, and Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the show every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you are unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. You can always go um, to our website and watch our archives afterwards in the recordings, and I'll show you at the end of today's show where to access all of those archives. Uh, both the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch. So um, please do share with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, anyone you think might be interested in any of the topics we have on the show. Uh, the Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency um, for libraries, for any of you watching or joining us who are not in Nebraska. And um, so that means we cover, we provide resources and services and training and education, et cetera, et cetera, to all types of libraries in, in the state. So you will find things on our show for all types of libraries. So academics, K-12, uh, public, special, museums, corrections, anything that's got a library in it, we may have something on the show uh, related to that. And we do a mixture of things here, book reviews, interviews, mini training sessions, demos of services and products, um, cool things we think libraries are doing or could be doing. Uh, we have Nebraska Library Commission staff that sometimes come on and present things that are specific to what we're doing here via the Library Commission. But we sometimes bring in guest speakers. As you have this morning, you can see we have um, from three different locations across the country. <laughs> um, with us today is Beth Nolinski. Good morning, Beth. Morning. Is, and she is the executive director of United for Libraries, which we're going to talk about. That's what we're talking about today. As well as uh, Peter Pearson, who is the current president of United for Libraries. I'm correct with that timing? Yeah. Good morning. Yep. Yeah. And also Laura England Biggs, who is from here in Nebraska, uh, our Key Memorial Library in Fremont. She's going to talk about um, an award that the library got a little later in the show. So I'm going to hand over straight to you, Beth, I believe, to get things started to tell us about United for Libraries. Right. Well, actually, I want to give... Um, I'll say two quick sentences, then let Peter do an intro as well. Um, so hopefully by now you all have been using our resources on the website for years because Nebraska Library Commission, um, I'm always proud to say this, was the first state library to purchase statewide group membership in United for Libraries. That's right. Round of applause there for your state library, your state librarian, Rod Wagner, who actually was a prior president of United for Libraries. Um, not at the time he started the statewide group membership, but many years, um, years later, served on the board and uh, it's just so, such an honor to work with you guys you do so many wonderful things and uh, in addition to this show you just have so many great resources out there for your libraries in the state so um, I give Peter a chance to talk a little bit about what he's interested in this year in his presidency and where he's going and then we'll circle back and I'll tell you about some of the great new things happening and a brand new way to access all of the resources that I know you guys are all gonna love That's very right, exciting. <laughs> hey, thank you Beth uh, good morning, everybody. I'm Peter Pearson, and it's my honor to be the current board president of United for Libraries. Uh, for those of you that don't know United for Libraries, it's one of the divisions of the American Library Association, and specifically the division that provides programs and services to the non-librarians in the library world, trustees, friends of libraries, library foundations, and then those people that just would call themselves library advocates, and we love them all. So. I've had a library career for uh, about 28 years now, and in that 28 years, I actually had the privilege of serving in every one of those positions that United serves. I've been a library trustee, I've been a friend of library, I've been executive director of a library foundation, and currently in my semi-retirement, I'm an advocate and continue to be a library advocate and hope I will till the day I die. Um, I think why United is so important to me is those of us that serve in those roles of trustee, friends and foundation and advocates, we don't really have anybody at the local level who we can turn to for thoughts and advice on the kind of work we do. It's a little bit isolating. And so as a result of that, United becomes so critically important because it connects you 
to the entire world of people who do just what you do, people who are trustees, friends, and foundations. In addition to that, United has its own wonderful services, besides you getting to talk to people who do what you do and getting their ideas. United also has a great professional staff. Beth Nowalinski, our executive director, who you'll be hearing from shortly, is wonderful, as well as Jillian Wentworth, um, who's more behind the scenes, but uh, absolutely a wonderful professional who can help you. So one-on-one -on -one help with these individuals is extremely important when you're a member of United. In addition to that, we of course put on webinars like what we're doing today. Um, at each of the conferences, we do a great deal of programming for those of you that are able to attend the national conferences. And then all kinds of online and print resources that United has, just a wealth of information for everybody. So if you're not a member of United, I'd sure encourage you to become one. And for those of you who are in states that are not state um, libraries for United, talk to your state library. And um, maybe we can hear from Krista more about why she thinks it's so critically important for a state library to make sure that United's resources are available to every library in the state. Because we all know there are so many smaller and rural libraries that just don't have the resources to buy their own. And that's where state memberships are so critically important. So again, kudos to Nebraska for being our first we now have seven states that have purchased that statewide membership, and hopefully that number will grow this year. So during my presidential year, my focus actually is gonna be on grassroots advocacy. And this is something that's near and dear to my heart. I probably have spent more of my time doing fundraising in the past, but advocacy, political advocacy is probably the thing that I feel most passionately about. Because as much as private fundraising is helpful to libraries, let's face it, the vast majority of the funding that operates our libraries comes from our local property tax dollars. And that's the area where we need to be very active in getting our local elected officials to listen to the needs for that local funding. So I've always been in situations where citizens who either um, are members of a friends group or members of a library foundation have been able to lead that effort on behalf of the library. And it's so much more convincing to our elected officials when they have citizens approaching them about the importance of libraries and funding. They expect the library director and library staff to need more money. So that's not going to be a, a message that's going to have much weight. But when local influential citizens who we have on our boards come forward and say, our library doesn't have enough to operate, it doesn't have the money it needs to really provide the services that our community needs, that's a message then that our local elected officials listen to. The other thing to remember is most library directors aren't even allowed to do lobbying at the local level. So since they're prohibited from doing that, this is the perfect place for citizens to step forward and say, we can make this happen. We can be the spokespeople for the library staff and directing. In places where I've seen it work, you have an, a committee, an advocacy committee of the Friends or Foundation. It meets all year long. It's not an 11th hour situation where you hear there's going to be a budget cut and everyone says, oh, let's jump in and make a change here. This starts early on in the budget process. You meet with the library director and the library director's role is to educate the citizen lobbyists. He or she provides all kinds of information that they'll need, tells where the funding is needed. And then from there, the committee can put forth a position paper, a platform. Of, here it is what we want our elected officials to support in the next budget cycle. And remember, you're starting early on. So you're not coming in after the budgets are pretty much set anyway. You're actually uh, allowing the elected officials to have lots of time to look at ways they can fund the things that you're proposing to them. So these standing committees uh, I've seen have incredible results. I've now lived in two different places in the United States where we've operated with one of these committees. First, uh, and for most of my career in St. Paul, Minnesota, where the elected officials absolutely were responsive. Um, and now in my semi-retirement, I live in Sarasota, Florida, a place that actually is fiscally quite conservative. And in spite of the fact that it's so fiscally conservative, our advocacy committee of our library foundation has gotten our county commissioners to increase funding two times in the last two years. Just an amazing situation, uh, especially given that they have refused to raise our levy in 20 years. So you can see we're, um, we're up against some pretty tough odds here, but when you have this concerted effort of citizens, it works. So my focus this year is I would love to create a training program that we could roll this out to people all across the country 
to help them develop these grassroots political advocacy efforts. And uh, we were very fortunate this year in that a, a real close friend of United, a man by the name of Jack Neal from Neal Human Publishers, the name is probably familiar to most of you, Jack passed away in February and left in his will money to United so that we could do some grassroots training in advocacy. So fortunately, it was a passion of Jack's as well as mine. So Jack's passion and mine this year have lined up nicely so that we'll be able to use Jack's bequest to help us roll out this type of a program for advocates all over the country. That's awesome. Glad to thank hear you. it. Oh, thank you. Yes, we're very excited about it. So um, we'll have this hopefully out and ready to run by this summer. Um, but all of you, please uh, contact United if uh, you want to hear where we are, um, you know, what, what our progress is on this. The other thing I want to just say about our effort here is this is totally um, separate and different than the kind of political advocacy that the American Library Association does. We love ALA's advocacy efforts, and they've been doing a lot of it for over 20 years. But the focus of ALA tends to be either federal uh, legislation for libraries or state level funding. And in both of those situations, library directors can make very effective spokespersons. It's a whole different situation than at the local level where the library director can't do that. So our program is not in conflict with ALA. In fact, we had a wonderful meeting with all of the staff at the ALA Washington office in September to lay this out and talk about how this could uh, dovetail with what they do. And they're very excited that we're going to be doing this as uh, United. So watch for more to come. We're excited. We're doing something that we think is going to be really critical to helping libraries with their operating budgets going forward. That's the bottom line. We want you to have more money to do the things that you know are so important at the local level. And now I will turn it over to Beth. All right, great. Thank you so much, Peter. You're the, you have also been involved with uh, with us for a long time as well, back dating back to the Friends of Libraries USA days when uh, Rod was also in, involved with us too, and and launched that statewide group membership. So um, well over ten years, you guys have been with us in Nebraska, and, and we're just so uh, thrilled to continue to work with you. So um, as Peter mentioned, we're working on these uh, trainings that will be focused on that community-led advocacy and. And there'll be a, um, a component about of that, an online component, and we'll be doing some in-person trainings as well, and those will roll out in the summer. A couple of things related to that is Peter's President's Program at the 2020 annual LA Annual Conference in Chicago will be a panel um, of speakers uh, from uh, St. Paul and, and Peter as well and some others talking about those efforts there and uh, that will be recorded and we'll be able to make that available as well to all of our statewide group members. So it's not live streamed during the conference but you will be able to watch it afterwards as our president's program. So um, that'll be something we'll push out and we have some other things that are happening between now and then as well. Our United for Libraries um, Institute for Trustee Friends and Foundations at the ALA Midwinter Meeting coming up in about two weeks here in Philadelphia, um, hoping for no snow, knock on wood. Um, that uh, that is a three hour program that we're doing in conjunction with the Free Library of Philadelphia and we are recording that and that will also be available to all of you in Nebraska and our statewide group members. Um, uh, we, we are most likely live streaming it, but I can't promise that right this minute. Um, we're working through the details on that. Of course, if it's live streamed, that'll all come out to everyone. Um, and uh, if it's if not, you'll you'll be able to access recording anyway. But I'm excited about that group. We have some great speakers, and I'll. I'll show you on the website where you can find that now, um, including a panel from the Free Library, the Friends of the Free Library of Philadelphia. They're in a really unique situation in that the foundation and the city jointly fund uh, grassroots advocacy um, folks or community engagement coordinators in the various parts of the city, um, which is really unusual. I, I don't know that I know of any other city that actually helps to fund people to raise library awareness and increase library funding <laughs> specifically. Um, and the goal is eventually 
actually for all of those positions to be taken over um, into the city's budget, which is really a unique situation in how they do this. So we'll have a one hour panel with a group um, from the friends that will be talking about that as part of this institute. And then we're going to have a follow up later with the foundation as well to kind of go more into the nuts and bolts of how they've done that. So again, all those will be available to you guys in Nebraska. Um, we also, our keynote speaker is uh, Gretchen Rubin, who has written multiple um, books. You might know her from The Happiness Project, The Four Tendencies, her new one is Outer Order, Inner Calm. And um, she'll be talking a little bit about what uh, her focus from The Four Tendencies, which is about how you kind of receive in and act on information that's given to you or requests that are made of you. So it's a great time with advocacy because you're looking at how does someone process that request and therefore follow through on it. At the same time, we'll be having um, a speaker talk about our ease of libraries, um, not ease as in E-A-S-E, -E, but ease as in education and um, uh, entrepreneurship, employment, educate. So we'll, we'll show that um, to you as well in a few minutes. Um, so the, the two things kind of tie together. One is the language and the verbiage you use to connect with people, and then the other sort of knowing your audience and how you phrase things and make requests of them. So all this ties in with what Peter's talking about as well as that community-led and citizen-led advocacy piece. Um, so I'll show you on the website in a couple of minutes where that information is and where you'll find links to be able to actually access the recording or if we are able to um, get all the details in order, live stream it, which we're really excited about. Um, and you'll be able to break that up and watch it in parts and pieces later. Don't worry, you don't have to do three hours at one time. That's a, a, a good bit of time. So let's talk about some of the exciting things happening. I know that, Christy, you had on our amazing, amazing Emerging Leaders team um, in December talking about recruit, recruiting millennials for boards, we trustees, did, friends, yeah. and foundations, right? So mm -hmm. exciting for anyone who got to hear from them. Today, actually this afternoon at two o'clock Eastern, we have our monthly member forum and we have two of the um, Emerging Leaders team will actually be speaking today. They'll be going in a little bit different than what they presented when they talked to you guys, um, oh. but they'll be going into a little bit more detail there. And that is a precursor to a webinar on February 19th, which is an in-depth exploration of the topic. And um, as of course, statewide group members, you have access to all of our monthly member forums, but you also get to attend that, that webinar in February for for nothing. It's absolutely free, zero dollars, um, where uh, the registration will actually be is $65 for individuals. So that's another great benefit you have of statewide group membership is you have free access to our uh, fee-based webinars. So we'll make sure that's in some follow-up stuff as well um, to get that information with the links. And I'll pop that up in a few minutes. So yes, two o'clock this afternoon Eastern. If you're interested, that'll be live. It will be recorded. Um, and uh, amazing interest, as you can all imagine, I'm sure, and Laura, you can even touch a little bit on, on um, when we get to talking about your award, um, you know, how how you guys have engaged the community more broadly. So those monthly member forms are the second Wednesday of every month at 2 p.m. Eastern. Uh, you do register to participate in the live Zoom and you can access the recording later. Peter spoke for us in October about planned giving campaigns. We've also touched on um, intellectual freedom, um, future of libraries. Uh, we had the director of the Center for the Future of Libraries speak. In February, we'll be talking about National Library Legislative Day. Of course, we know some um, some folks from Nebraska always make it into D.C. for National Library Legislative Day, um, but there are tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of other advocates out there who can connect with their elected officials during that same time. So United for Libraries for many years has sponsored a virtual component to that, and, and we'll have Emily Wagner from the Public Policy and Advocacy, formerly known as Washington Office, come and talk. Then we'll be talking about National Library Week in um, in March and in April, we will have our speaker talking about the ease of libraries. Uh, so we'll come back to that. So, Chris, I'm going to go ahead and bring up my screen. If you can just let me know that you see everything clearly, we should now be yep. on the United for Libraries website. Yep, I see the yep, okay. I see the main website right now. Yep, looks good. Right. 
Great. All right. Excellent. So I'm currently at, even though you don't actually see it up here in the URL because I logged in, I'm at the um, ala.org slash united slash states. And that um, link is also highlighted just whenever you're here on the site. You can, wherever you are, you can always um, see the statewide group members link and it'll just take you there. And now you see when I refreshed, you get the full URL here. Now you'll know that um, you'll know you're logged in when you see the log out button up here. Um, basically, if this says login, you can click this to log in. You can also click any of these links here to log in as well. Um, so we have, um, and at any time you, that you need, anyone needs a login, um, you may request that through our website as well. Yep. And you can so also, if we're here in Nebraska, I'm not sure about yep. the other states, but you can contact us here for it, Correct. myself or, um, the person we have mainly in charge of all of our um, continuing education related things, which this falls into for us, is Holly Duggan, who's our continuing education coordinator. She's the, for you Nebraska people, the contact to reach out to um, locally for what our password is to get you in, logged in, and anything about using these services, earning CE credits for participating in what, and you, doing some of the webinars and trustee trainings and other things that Beth's going to talk about. Great. All right. Thank you so much, Krista. And yes, um, we do have that statewide login for Nebraska. Um, as you've been with us for that more than that decade, we've, of course, moved from uh, had some increases in technology uh, resources to be able to, to change that. So you do still have anyone who's using that statewide login, please continue. If you'd like, you can get it there, as Chris had mentioned. Um, and we are transitioning over um, to an opportunity for people to have their own single login as well, um, where they can update their contact information and have their own username and password. And that is what you'll need to access a new platform, which I'll talk about in a few minutes. That's really exciting as we move to making um, this even more accessible, especially on the go for folks. So let's just, uh, you know, go quickly through some of the things here uh, because I want to leave time for questions. And of course, we want to talk about uh, Keene Memorial Library as well. Um, as Krista mentioned with the trustee training, you do have the, uh, the access here to the short takes. Oh, it's asking me to log in again. Um, Oh, let's see. I don't want to show the password. <laughs> Hang on a second here. Sometimes this does happen. So let me see if I can do it this way. Now it's going to ask me. All right. I'm going to go this way just because I don't want to, um, to put the password in. We're recording. There we go. Um, the reason that that came up is because the links on the homepage are, um, actually coded to bring up the login link. So if you click on it and you haven't logged in, um, but this is one of those things with what they call single sign on with the ALA site that sometimes it asks you to put it in again, but I didn't want to put that up there. So um, you have the trustee academy courses, the short takes for trustees, which I know um, get a lot of use in Nebraska. I get actually copied on emails when someone registers for the various webinars. And the reason for that is not because I'm checking up on all of you, um, but because I can see if someone has logged in twice in a short period of time, then I anticipate that you might be experiencing some issue. And so I'm able to reach out and say, hey, are you having a problem? How can I help you? And and sometimes that is can be a browser. Um, the All of the the format of the webinars through Zoom are um, better on the platform of Internet Explorer or Firefox. Chrome can tend to give some issues with Zoom at times, and I know a lot of libraries use Chrome, so that's where we'll, we'll kind of pop in and help people with that. As I'm talking about that access, let me also be clear that we are well aware that many libraries in Nebraska are very rural um, and internet access can be an issue, the speed of the internet access. And we want to be sure that no one is ever prevented from participating in trainings or viewing the recordings because of any internet issues. If that is ever a problem for your library, please absolutely reach out to us because we will work with you. We will send out the training on a CD. We will give you a download link where you can download it and run it from straight from your own computer. Uh, we'll work with you in whatever way possible. Uh, that 
that rural location, that, that um, inconsistent internet should never prevent anyone in your community with your board, your friends or your foundation or your library staff from accessing the trainings. Um, so the again, the short takes for trustees. And then you'll see that you can register for webinars here. I'm just gonna click on the monthly member forums because of course we were talking about that, right? So once you had um, logged in, then you would be able to come right here and you see that here is uh, January 2020 and you click right on this then you'll be able to go here's my link to register and here's the description so we have Madeline Jarvis from Marion Iowa Public Library and Tess Wilson of the National Network of Libraries of Medicine um, here in Pennsylvania will be leading this webinar and those of you who watched the prior session I mentioned in Nebraska know that this um, dynamic unbelievably dynamic group of four um, up and coming library leaders have done incredible research and put together just amazing information on recruiting younger board members. They mm -hmm. in fact have a book coming out with United for Libraries and ALA editions um, around the time of annual and so we were really excited. It's a workbook format to kind of walk you through looking at your own boards when you have your meetings, how you, um, what your succession planning is, how you cultivate future leaders so you can actually work through these processes yourself and again all of the past ones um, as well here and this was Peter uh, so you can go right into these and access the link to register for the current ones and to the prior ones as well um, Another popular place people are coming to find information is, of course, our newsletter, which you guys are all receiving at your libraries in the print copy, but you can come on here and get the digital copy. So um, these are PDFs that you can download, um, and that way, uh, when you share that login or you, your trustees or friends board members, foundation board members request their own login or use that statewide login, they can come in and view those those newsletters as well. Uh, we have increased that from a 24 page newsletter to um, 28 or 32 pages in some cases, um, it, depending on what additional content we want to put in, and it is now full color. Uh, so that's a big, um, an it's an amazing Im improvement. Um, more content, of course, in the full color really brings to life the photos that we include in there, mm -hmm. uh, which I think are really great. One yeah, I actually have one, one on my desk that I was just looking at that happened, um, is actually the October issue that actually has the article about Key Memorial in here. Good, 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 good. Excellent, excellent. So, um, yeah, it's, I mean, just amazing, amazing to be able to have that and, and share it around. But of course, there is that PDF copy as well. And we have all of the archive newsletters you'll see here back to 2014. For those uh, who remember the Felusa days, Friends of Libraries USA days, that was news update. And you can get the articles in there. You mentioned all types of libraries. We have a section in every issue that is focused on academic libraries that we call Friends on Campus. Um, in addition to yeah. that being in each issue, we do pull out those so it's easy for academic libraries to look specifically at those and I wanted to say for the school libraries um, that we do have some resources on our site for school libraries but it is a particular interest of our current president-elect David Page who will um, come into office um, after Peter's term and uh, so he is focusing on um, some school library things with friends of school libraries and you'll see more resources coming in that area as well um, publications, this is where we've kind of got all of the uh, di digital downloads of our books. So um, 101 plus great ideas and even more great ideas for libraries and friends were actually published with Neil Schumann uh, many years ago. And you can download the PDFs of these uh, books here. We're in the process, there, there are a couple hundred pages because you're getting the entire book. So we're actually in the process of, of dividing those up into individual PDFs um, based on the chapters and or on the topic and then having an index to them. So it's easier for everyone to find what they might be looking for. We often call these recipe books of sorts. It's why invent the wheel again, you know, take advantage of those that you can learn from, like we're going to learn um, from Laura about Key Memorial Library today. So it's just a, a, a great way to access some amazing resources. I'm sure many of you have used our fact sheets, our one pagers and our um, tip sheets for trustees. Those have been all newly redesigned and we've expanded. We have our library board practical guides, which are kind of toolkits focused for the, the trustees specifically and then um, 
they fall under a little bit different of a category than our toolkits are here and then some our mini toolkits for friends groups and foundations so you know if you'd like to say a fact sheet or tip sheets a one one pager or front and back and then you go to the next step of toolkits probably in the order of seven to ten pages maybe 12 in some cases and then the books are, are more detailed as well up here so just tons of information in this area um, we talked a little bit about the webinars um, and of course if we uh, click on other resources here you'll see the Frenger library which uh, I always love that Nebraska was um, you, you're just such an amazing leader in this area that uh, when United for Libraries released some downloadable um, bookmark and poster templates through ALA graphics. Um, we actually, Nebraska called and said, oh, as state growth group members, can we access this? And yes, indeed, we made it available for you all. So it's a value of $48 per library that you're able to download these um, templates and they are in PDF where it's a fillable PDF where you can actually put in information and then create bookmarks and posters using this friend your library and then you can also use this logo itself on other materials so um, a couple of years ago I think maybe three years ago two years ago at one of your conferences you guys had a makerspace and mm -hmm. um, made buttons and um, oh yes tags they'll do and, that yes <laughs> yes yeah, yes, and I when I saw um, Rod Wagner next, next, he showed me the luggage tags. They were really neat. So you that see logo there. there is perfect for to put on a button to wear. We have a lot of people that do use that. Yeah, we still go around and promoting the button maker and our maker spaces that we're putting into libraries. Yep. Wonderful. Yeah, they're great. It's perfect for that. And it really, you know, still in this age of Facebook works that that term works really well. So it's it's a fun one to use. And then um, also you all qualify for the 10 percent discount in the ALA store. So that's there as well. Um, discussion forums. Peter talked about that rich um, you know, ability to share and talk to other people about what's happening around um, around the country and even internationally, we do have some international folks who participate as well. So our, our discussion forums, they used to be open to anyone, but they are now a member benefit. Uh, so we have one for trustees, one for friends groups, one for foundations, um, and you just come here and you fill out this little form uh, and then we sign you up for whatever you pick. Once you actually pick your state here of Nebraska, you're actually going to see that the form changes and you don't have to tell us anything about your, your library um, because we already know you're a statewide group member. So you'll just input your personal information on the next page and we get you signed up. So those discussion groups, friends and trustees discussion groups are around about a thousand people on them and the foundation has less but that's a place where you can go and ask a question like hey we're revamping this policy does it, if anyone have anyone one to share and I know you have some discussion groups and listservs within Nebraska that you all are doing resource sharing already this just takes it out across the US and expands that um, into other other regions as well to gain information so I know I did a quick overview of everything um, and if you there's actually a chart too that shows everything that's included and we'll make sure you guys can access that also but I wanted to tell you about this new platform that we're using so this right here is uh, our platform through what's called teachable um, it's a third party uh, online school of sorts and everything is packaged in courses so you're going to see the terminology eight course bundle or you'll see the terminology course throughout this um, but uh, so just keeping in mind that, um, that that's how it's set up. But what we've done is we've taken all of those resources that we have over here, right, in all of these sort of categories that you see here and built them into courses within Teachable. So here's, I'll bring up short takes for trustees, for example. So right here, this brings up the entire series and I can click on any of these um, links right here. Unfortunately, the, the initial clip of the video that comes up is never a, a very beautiful clip of the person speaking, but um, sorry, Sally. Um, but you play it directly right here in your browser, um, and uh, then the resource guide is downloadable from each screen as well. And as you go through and you complete watching these, uh, you get an email indicating that you watched that video, and then when you complete the entire set, we actually issue a certificate for the entire short 
takes for trustees to you. So this would link into your CE credits as, as Krista mentioned there as well. Um, so this is a very user-friendly uh, way to move through all of the resources that we have available. Let me bring up and I'll show you, for example, monthly member forums. You won't even have to go into Zoom to do anything to register because once you have a teachable login, you'll just come right here and access everything and the video is right here. Okay, so um, so this is a very easy way to access all of the resources that we have. Um, it is based on an individual login rather than a statewide login. Um, but the really great thing is that we have been able to set this up so that once the registration form goes live for Nebraska, you will register and then you won't be waiting for a staff member to create any kind of, of login or anything for you. It's, it's all seamless. So if you are up at 2 a.m. and you want, desperately want to find an answer to a question, you can register, go in there, immediately get access to everything without having to wait until a staff member is, um, is available the next day to create a, an individual login for you. So that's a really great feature that we have um, for everyone. This will also allow us to kind of look at, um, for example, if you're a library director and you want to be able to it'll help us to encourage your trustees, here you've created, you know, we, we build a seat, this person has finished five of the courses and we can send them a reminder, you know, to continue to work on the other courses. So it's going to allow a lot of um, engagement opportunities at, in, in addition to that ease of use. So is, what, this, is this uh, individual login just for taking the courses or is it for everything that we have available as a state library um, so member? So everything, everything that you have available, which means anything that we're putting through the main website will come up as a course in here. So I know that's where it gets a little confusing, but I think people are going to really find this to be an amazing resource. So yeah. this, this course, and I'm using air quotes here, even though you all can't see it, is called Toolkits and Digital Publications. But here are all of those toolkits and practical guides that were over here. So, okay. so I'm just over here on the website. Yep. When this does yep. become the full on thing, we switch from the uh, one password for everyone in the state to individual. There won't even be the, um, the one, the general one anymore. We'll keep that going for a while, but I think um, the, the desire is to get everybody in there so that they can um, more easily manage what they, they have completed because they'll be able to see what they've completed once you've exactly that would very useful be able to track. Yeah. Yes. They'll be able to track their own personal um, training and what they've completed in a, in a much different way, which I think is personalizes it a, a lot more. But yeah. so I was over in library board practical guides. So I'm just showing you on the main website. See you come in here and it's got the descriptions and then the download now buttons. And over here, when you go in, you just go right in there. It's got that description and um, you can download that PDF as well there. So, um, and again, you'll be able to see, you'll be marking something complete that you've read this or that you've done this mm -hmm. and even when you mark it complete you can go back to it again at any point in time um, this is nice. there's a couple of things that are really positive about this one is that seamless registration and immediately you're in we verified you're in Nebraska you're immediately in 24 7 365 and I say this every year to you all and I'll say it again you'll be amazed at the number of people who are accessing training and resources in the middle of the night, um, on the weekends, on holidays. <laughs> Even this year, I had, um, there were probably about 20 registrations for various courses. Um, again, that sort of when you fill out that Zoom form currently through the, the main website, I get that ping. So on Christmas day, you know, people watched videos, training videos, um, and New Year's Day, people were watching things. So you're volunteers, we know that. Trustees, friends, foundations, you're volunteers. You're doing this after you've already done everything else in your lives, um, you know, and, and, and trying to work it in when you can. And we want to make sure that we provide that access when, wherever we can as quickly as we can. So for this time period, you know, we'll be running both sites for a while as we kind of transition people over. But we really do want to move everyone over into the point where they have their own login so that they can get that personalized experience. Um, in here in this course, when it launches, the one, the main 
same one called Nebraska Library Commission, the North, um, Nebraska Statewide Group Membership. That's where we'll also have more information when the Library Commission wants to get information to trustees and friends and foundations about other training opportunities. They offer other things. Krista, we'll, we'll add in this and update what you would like us to put in there for folks. So um, that'll be great. And we can also, we'll also link off to your State Library Association. So it can become kind of this one-stop shopping for, for trustees, friends, and foundations to kind of um, know about the resources that they have available. So everything that's here, is going to be in here and teachable and you can start to see that it's that it's here okay i want to show you that there is an app available for this so i'm bringing up krista can you see the pictures here yes yep okay Okay, so this is a screenshot off of my iPhone that I took um, earlier this morning, and you see these same courses. They're the same images that you saw in the main site, the main Teachable site there, and you see they're all in there. Um, they're all marked zero percent complete because this is sort of this is our test test account here that we use. Um, and when you click in, so this is into short takes for trustees, and you see all of these right here. They're right here where you just click in and you watch, and then let show you when we go right in the video is right there and embedded so again you're not going off to zoom to put in additional information once you're registered through this you are just going all the way through it you don't ever have to give us your information again for those things unless you're registering for something live because that's a little different um, but anything you're accessing on demand is always just built right into the app so um, this is a screenshot so I can't actually play this but you can see it's got the little intro the resource guide down Download and then the video. You can, through the Teachable app, um, download for offline viewing so that you do not have to use your data to stream videos or to, to um, download the, um, the PDF. So if you choose in your settings to do that for download for offline viewing, that of course uses your memory on your device, but it doesn't then use your data. Um, the app is currently only available for iOS platforms, so that would be Apple platforms. However, the mobile site is extremely user-friendly. So pretty much what you see here, you will see on the mobile site, um, and it is mobile responsive. And for those who don't know what that means necessarily is that the, and I'm using my hands even though you guys can't see me, but that it resizes based on the size of your screen. So whether you're on a big tablet, a medium-sized tablet, or a smaller phone, it will resize and rearrange these icons. So, um, for example, on my iPhone, um, these you would see these in sort of a, a longer list of one across the screen down, more like you saw on this this picture right here. So the mobile site's going to come up and do it more like this um, than, oops, I didn't mean to start Firefox, than the three across where you're trying to scroll into something and see it um, in, in smaller detail. So if you're on an Android platform, if you have a tablet that is not an Apple tablet, do not even worry. The mobile site is extremely user-friendly, um, and I do know that they have um, an Android app in the works. The main difference really from a user experience between the app and the mobile site is that the app does allow you to download for offline use um, so that you're not streaming on your data, whereas the, the mobile site um, is, is a streaming. Um, piece, but um, you know, it does. None of them are using tons of data, um, and certainly the information is in there, so you'll know. Um, you can choose to do that. Um, but if you're, you know, you're accessing from your home computer, or you're on Wi-Fi, it won't be an issue for anyone at all. But it certainly makes this a lot easier for everyone. So you know what? When you're at that board, you're at the board meeting, and you're wondering, uh, do we have a resource on succession planning? And you can go right into the mobile site, into um, into your phone in the app and you can see yes we've got a toolkit on it we have a, a short takes course on it we've got a tip sheet on it so we can meet you where you are in your need at that moment probably the tip sheet because that's going to be your one pager when you're in the middle of a meeting um, and not not more in depth there so that's super exciting for everyone in the works currently as well is and you'll see this come up in the courses um, maybe not when it launches at the end of the month but definitely coming this spring is you all know that we have in the newsletter the good ideas from the network that couple of pages of little short kind of um, pop outs of what's happening around the country and ideas of what other people have done that will all be 
available through here um, in a searchable and indexed um, uh, format. So you actually will be able to go in and search by keyword or um, you'll be able to search by library. So Keene Memorial Library might want to know all the times they were ever mentioned in the United for Libraries newsletter and sure enough you'll be able to find it and pull it up in there. So that's really exciting. Um, it, it all, We've done a lot of testing with it. Um, right now it's just a matter of getting the data from you know the last, we're starting with about five years worth of the newsletter in there and I think people are going to find that again really user-friendly. You're in a friends group meeting and you're thinking about trying out, um, let's say, um, uh, let's see, a, a popular thing that, that's happening right now is is like the um, no dinner dinner. Um, if anyone remembers from tool time when um, the um, Tim the Toolman's Taylor's wife, I can't remember her name, sorry, was hosting a no dinner dinner for the library. Um, and of course they had such fun with it, but the idea that you buy the dinner, but you actually don't go. So all the money goes to the library, but you stay at home. Um, so these kinds of fundraisers are getting more and more popular and you'd be able to check in and see right through the app, examples of what other people have done. For example, we have at annual conference this summer in Chicago, a program on the stay at home and read storybook ball. And the idea is that you engage people through social media and your website to dress up and stay home and read together, but they register for this and uh, there's the cost of that then is a fundraiser for the friends or the foundation to support the library. These are becoming more and more popular um, in the, um, in the uh, ecosystem for friends and for foundations as well. So that these will all be things you can find very easily on the go. And I'm, I'm just super, super excited about it. So I just wanted to go back and before I inter um, we talk about Key Memorial Library to mention a couple of things here on the website. So um, the award that we're going to talk about with Keen is actually our Baker and Taylor Awards, um, which are here on the site under awards and all of the information in here. And I also had mentioned to you all about the ALA Midwinter Meeting and our institute that's under conferences and events. This is the institute right here. Um, and again, it is so super exciting. The uh, our keynote speaker, Gretchen Rubin, our Ease of Libraries. We have a session on fundraising um, with Libby Post, our recruiting advocates of all ages, uh, Lina um, and Tess again. I'm not sure who you, I can't recall who you all heard from in, in, um, in, October, in December, but um, these uh, young women are part of that group. And then that hour long panel I mentioned about the Friends of the Free Library of Philadelphia. So this is actually where we will have the information either to, um, about if we're able to live stream, we'll have all those details right here on this page. And of course, we'll get that information out to the um, Nebraska Library Commission to send to you all. And if it's recorded, give us you know a week or so after the event to get that up on the site um, for everyone. And then you'll be able to access that as well. If you are coming to midwinter, re, you know, shoot us an email at united at ala.org. Anyone from Nebraska, you're coming to midwinter, I'd love to have the opportunity to to meet with you. Um, we love to have you involved in some of our things that we have going on. In addition to this institute, we do have um, a donuts and dialogue mentioned right down here um, for trustees, friends, and foundations on Sunday morning, and we have some other things going on. So if you're going to be there, I'm going to reach out and let us know. All right, so Let's talk about Keen. I know you guys have been waiting to hear from your from your uh, local stars there. Oh. So I will stop sharing my screen. Let's see. Stop showing screen. Okay, we're back here. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to read the, the introduction from the um, from the press release, and but I'm not going to give it all away, Laura. Okay. Upon receipt of a property donation, the Friends of Keene Memorial Library were prompted to jumpstart funding for a library expansion project. The Friends community outreach to gain support for the project included reaching out to friends, relatives, and neighbors about supporting the library through Friends-funded activities and events. Their efforts paid off and I will of course let you talk about those efforts and how they paid off. Um, so over to you Laura and uh, I know everyone's going to be excited to hear about all of your great efforts. Okay thank you. Uh, it was back in 2016 when Tina Walker first started at the library. 
that she learned about the house that had been donated by a foundation with the stipulation that library expansion must begin. We had a timeline that has since been removed, yay. So we have a little more flexibility. Um, but she did start talking to the friends. They did the outreach. They hosted events. We went in for a $2 million bond vote. There were three votes being taken, one for the library, one for the splash station to get a lazy river, and one to uh, update and remodel the city auditorium. The splash station failed. The city auditorium passed by 65% and the library passed by 67%. So we have $2 million towards our $10 million project right there, thanks to the work the friends did to really raise support among the taxpayers. Um, they've also done some one-on-one -on -one meet and greets with some of the, the higher dollar amount uh, people in town to try and raise awareness of what we're doing, why we're doing it, what the benefits are for the community. And we are now sitting at just shy of $4 million with that $2 million bond and some family gifts and donations from the community. And really, we couldn't have done it without them. And even while they've been doing that, they've been organizing the annual book sale and in the past year, they uh, started a new partnership with Dave's Drive-In Liquor, which is kind of an interesting partnership. Um, we have a perpetual book nook at Dave's. He's lined the shelves of his drive-through, or the, the walls of his drive-through with bookshelves, and we have gently used books available there for a free will donation. The Friends Board meeting was Monday, and I believe their total take since that opened is over $7,000. It averages about $500 or more every month. And that's pure profit. He doesn't keep anything. He takes care of stocking it. He takes care of sorting it so that people can find children's books or mysteries or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's, it's really amazing everything that they've done for us. We actually did, I just want to mention, since you're talking about that right now, Laura, we did do an Encompass Live that Tina did come on the show talking about um, uh, growing partnerships were least expected and yes. then that drive, and that has been hugely popular in the news and everything. <laughs> yes, we had front page news coverage. Um, it just, it's incredible. And Jeff uh, Rise, who is the owner of the store, actually received the Friends Faith Perry Service Award, which is named after one of our book sorters who's been a huge supporter of the library for years. And it's it's really an honor for him to receive that this year. I guess it was last year, 2019. <clears throat> Yeah, that is really amazing. And I think, um, you know, it definitely ties in exactly with what Peter, you were talking about with that community led advocacy. There will always be a place for the friends book sales. There will always be a place for those friend raising activities. Um, but the power of the voices of the community members goes so much further with uh, elected officials because if they aren't advocating for their own salaries because they truly are the, the interested and engaged community members. Members. So um, hats off to you all for all you've done and the truly unique partnerships. Yes. So what's in what's in the works for the um, the timeline and uh, anything on tap for the remaining six million? We are currently designing a case study to be able to be handed out to those major fund donors, major donors. Um, we expect to really roll out a lot more of those meetings, meet and greets, um, some after hours events at the library starting in February so that we can really take it to the people. If we can reach the five to six million dollar mark, we've got some grants we can apply for that have matching um, components. And we've got several of those lined up that we're looking at and we've already begun the negotiations with, hey, when should we come talk to you? What do you want to see? That kind of thing. 
Great, great. I have um because I I find on our on our listserv this often comes up. Can you tell us the um the size of your library? What is your service population? Oh, sure. Your annual operating budget for the library, and then what is the size of your friends group? Oh, okay. Uh, our service population is about twenty six thousand. Okay. The library itself is a 20 some thousand square foot building. We're hoping to build up to 32,000 square foot. Uh, the operating budget is a little over a million. I don't know the exact number. Okay. It kind of varies. Our friends group, we've got a board of six. And I think the friends themselves, they have at least one or 200 people. I don't know okay. for sure. Okay. They just right. uh, started their new year and they only have one paid member so far, but everybody <laughs> waits for the book sale to join, yes. which is in March this year. So we'll Beth, see a lot of applications. Beth, I'm glad you asked that question because so many places say, oh, someone so-and-so has raised a couple of million dollars. We could never do that because we're a community of 25,000 people. And you're showing us, Laura, that a community of 26,000 people indeed has raised $4 million. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. And, You're an inspiration to every yeah. small library out there. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. That is amazing. Um, and uh, we're going to continue to talk about all the great things you guys are doing and the, the, the drive in. That's, that's fantastic. <laughs> that really, truly is fantastic. Um, so, congratulations to everyone there. Please, uh, you know, let your friends know again how, how amazing uh, they are and all that they do. And uh, we can't wait to hear that you've reached that 10 million mark and to, to see the library. So, um, fantastic. Fantastic. Thank All you. Right. All right. So I don't know, Chris, if anyone had any questions that came up, if you had any questions that you wanted to ask of us. Um, yeah, if anybody does have any questions or comments, anything you want to share, please do. Um, there we go. On the website, on the GoToWebinar interface under the questions section. I'm just getting that up here. Yep. Um, nobody said anything during the show, but that's okay. Um, I'm glad we were able to get this and get you guys all back again. Um, as some of you may know, we had a little technical difficulties when we tried to run this in November. Uh, halfway through the show, our internet went out. Yeah, no show. But um, uh, we are, as you said, we, we've been doing United for Libraries and um, in all its incarnations as a statewide uh, uh, offering here in Nebraska for, our, for a long time. And um, we try to have every year, at least once a year, um, remind you, you know, have you guys come on and talk about anything new that's going on. I'm very excited about the new uh, interface coming for people to, to access the resources because yep. um, I know having their own personal account will make a huge difference to people. There are people are always asking me about our Encompass Lives and other things. How do I get a certificate? How do I know what I did? Right. You know, where's the tracking for all my CE? And having a place for those things that you can do that for is going to be huge. Um, our libraries, they do have, we do have a place where they can track their own CE on their own that they do with us. But um, so this is going to be something that, that definitely Holly, I mentioned our CE coordinator is going to be very excited to, to start pushing and promoting. Right. Yeah, absolutely. There's a, another component, really, which is helpful for both for Holly and for the library directors in the reporting piece in that um, it'll be very easy for directors to gauge um, how folks are doing with completing those courses. Um, and we, you know, there's a lot of neat opportunities in there to have like a leaderboard out there to say that these libraries have completed 100 percent of short takes for trustees. All trustees have completed them, that sort of thing, which, as you're mentioning, I think that CE is really an important part um, of the experience for everyone, what are the lifelong learning, the um, self-improvement, learning how to be a better uh, board and reflecting in, in all cases. So getting it really to be user-friendly is, is, is a great opportunity and we'll be connecting with Holly. So we love to hear from you guys. You have ideas, you have issues, you have questions, concerns, anything at all, reach out. Um, united at ALA.org, quick, easy email to remember at any time of course give us a call but we do check emails those evenings weekends and holidays because we know that's when you guys are are um, out there as volunteers looking up that information so please do know we're here we want to hear from you um, because it, it actually helps us determine what we want to cover our monthly member forums the other fee-based webinars which will always be free there as part of your statewide group membership 
with. Um, we had the equity, diversity, and inclusion for trustees. In the spring last year, we had a three-part um, webinar series on fundraising um, and capacity building for libraries that focused on foundations um, and friends groups as well in there. And that, it, although it was fee-based and it was about $100 for members, it's free. It was free live for you all, and the recordings are free in that um, in the statewide group membership area of the website. So let us know um, because we have an amazing board, Peter. Uh, you know, we've got such an amazing board with people with um, just a wealth of knowledge and expertise that they want to share with, with you all. So we want to hear from you about what you're looking for uh, so we can deliver those services and resources. Yeah. And I know here in Nebraska, we will always, as, as we are good, dedicated to continuing our, our you know, statewide subscription to United for Libraries. I'm just showing here's the information on our page about it for people in Nebraska to find out, links to all the different things. Um, I've got previous sessions here from Encompass Live. We'll be updating with today's training will be on here, um, today's workshop. Um, but yeah, we do try, it's like you're mentioning, um, having a very rural state, it is hard for libraries to, like, library staff to get their professional development, you know, get their training, keep their, you know, skills up to speed. And things like this that are available online are a huge, you know, um, benefit to them that, you know, they can't travel. They don't have the, you know, the distances are very long um, and they don't have the time to take off and the money, you know, the budget to be able to leave the, their libraries. So um, we push a lot of these online resources to them and um, it, it's in all of our trustee and, and library board information for um, them to go here, go here, get your CE. <laughs> and you guys are doing it, I can tell you, because I do get those emails and I do see those registering. <laughs> yeah, we get the statistics, we know that we, you guys are using yes. it. We're glad. Yeah. Indeed, um, so that's just fantastic. Peter, did you have anything you wanted to share in closing? No final words. I think we've said it all. Absolutely. All right. So connect with us and reach out. And again, Laura, kudos to you guys. Just amazing. Yes, absolutely. Congratulations. We keep an eye on and in Fremont and what's going on there. Yeah, Definitely. And, and Thank you. I mean, it was a drop in the bucket compared to the 10 million you have to raise, but the thousand dollars for the Baker and Taylor Award, I hope, helped. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, and thank you to Baker and Taylor for the sponsoring that award um, annually to really recognize what friends groups out there are doing because they uh, they have amazing ability to really change um, the trajectory for the library and where they're going. With yeah, the funding. We've, we've had um, uh, we we push we promote that every year too when it's about we've had a previous library uh, our Ravenna Public Library also uh, won it mm -hmm. a couple of years ago as well. So mm -hmm. yeah, do is nominate. <laughs> All right, all right. Well, it doesn't look like we have any desperate questions right now. That's fine. Um, I think we will then officially wrap it up for today. Thank you very much, um, Beth and Peter, for being with us again um, this morning. Thank you, Laura, for coming and sharing about what's going on um, at King Memorial Library. Uh, so as we were talking about, this is the page on our website for United for Libraries information that you get from about the Library Commission. Holly Duggan, our CE coordinator, to contact about more information there. And let's see here, I wanted to show, this is the session I talked about that Tina did earlier this year about, um, that mentioned the different things they were doing there. Uh, also, um, let's see, this is today's page, and as I mentioned, we will be, we are recording the show, so I'm going to go back here. This is our Encompass Live main website. Uh, so far on the internet, if you just Google, use your search engine of choice and type in Encompass Live, nothing else is called that yet on the internet. Yay, nobody else is allowed to use that name, <laughs> so we can keep it that way. And you will come up with our main page. Uh, these are our upcoming shows, but right underneath there, we have a link to our archives. And you can see, um, here's our most recent one from last week. Today's show we posted on there. Um, by the end of the day today, everyone who attended and registered will get an email from me, and we push it out to our social media, our mailing list, as best mentioned, our Facebook page, Twitter. Uh, we post a link to the show. Um, if there were any handouts, there's gonna, but we don't have handouts or presentations for today's. As you saw, be, there are links in the session information to all the different websites that were um, the mentioned in the United for Libraries webpage. So that we posted up on here. Um, while I'm here, I'll show you, we do have a search feature here in our archives. We can search the entire archive or just most recent 12 months. Uh, this is because uh, we are um, uh, over 10 years into Encompass Live. Our first show was in January 2009. 
And all of our archives are here on the page. You can see there's a huge scroll. I'm not going to go all the way down. But um, you'll find everything all the way back to the very beginning archived here. So you can do a search and just search for everything, or you can just do the most recent one if you want really up-to-date information. Uh, but we'll always keep these up here. We are libraries. We, we save and archive and offer them out there um, for historical reasons. Just pay attention when you are looking at um, any particular session. Everything has a date of when it was originally broadcast. Uh, so keep that in mind. Some things will be still useful and, and, and helpful to you and, and you know, stand the test of time. Some things will be expired. Old things, uh, resources don't exist anymore, links might be broken, things like that. Um, services or things may have changed. Just pay attention to that date there. And I'll show you here since we were just mentioning it. Here is the one from December about advocates of all ages that you mentioned who, um, and David Page, the incoming president, right, um, was with us that time. And we had we had four people on. You had um, all four of that dynamic. Yes, everybody team. joined yes. us the group there. So uh, that was a great session. Yes. So definitely, if you're interested in trying to get this, is where you're talking about those millennials and Gen Z. The, you know the terms we use to label them. Um, anybody under 40, basically, who are not typically. Um, on your boards, um, on your trustees, although they are very much library supporters, we know this, and there's uh, tons of statistics and data information in there that can help you um, with that. So I definitely recommend watching that. Um, and as you said, watching the one this afternoon and the the one I what you said in February. The one in February, yeah. yeah. For the book. Um, each one of their sessions they have tweaked a little and customized. I know they had done this one earlier too, um, last year at the ARSL conference is where it first. Mm -hmm about it, um, Association for Rural and Small Libraries. So uh, um, there's going to be slightly different info and updates and things in each one. So um, take a look at all of those. Uh, OK, so that will be for today's show. Um, um, I hope you join us next week when our topic is Best New Children's Books of 2019, uh, Discovering New Books for the Young and Young at Heart. This is actually a. Uh, two sessions I'll show you here that are, are Sally Snyder, who is our coordinator of children and youth, um, young adult services, does a best new children's books. And you'll see just here in February, best new teen reads um, for the so new books that have come out that she does. Uh, next week, she will have also from Fremont, <laughs> Fremont High School, <laughs> uh, Dana Fontaine joins her, joins her to do the children's one next week. So if you're interested in coming up, um, there's new titles that you can purchase for your library for children's books you can want uh, please join us for next week's show and then she's got her uh, companion piece um, best new teen reads on february 5th so please do register for that any of our other upcoming shows we are also on facebook i had mentioned that here our facebook page here we post and promote things here here's a reminder to log in today's show um, so when our recordings are available, when new shows are available are coming up, we'll post on here eh, two or three times a week. Nothing too um, overwhelming. So if you do like to use Facebook, give us a like over there and keep an eye on what's going on with Encompass Live. So that does wrap it up then for everything. Thank you, everybody, for being here Thank today. You. Thank you, Laura and Mike Peter. And we'll see you another time on Encompass Live. Great. Right. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.